what I like but from this, by this meeting is that there is in this particular talking of love, talking of the need to tell the truth, involvement of patients and families, and last but not least, the deep understanding that without not getting policymakers and stakeholders on board, we, more, we won't be able to make a difference. And Dr. Detros light, light, rightly called it a tragedy that most of the annually 11 million of deaths are preventable. And this complies fully with the message of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation and our, doing zero harm, and that's why I'm glad to speak here. It's poorly understood, understood what sepsis really is and what it makes the difference between a so-called uncomplicated infections. Every knows what HIV is, every knows, body knows what cancer is, but the fact that sepsis develops when the host response, the defense mechanisms of our body is no longer able to contain an infection locally, and when it, then it spreads to the bloodstream, then there's an explosion of the immune system which kills the own tissues and, and organs. And it was again, you have heard already about Sir William Osler, there, who already at this time, and this was in 1900, understood that most likely it's not the pathogen itself, but the host's response to the injury. At this time, this did not make much difference. Uh, on the other hand, now there are therapies, and I will shortly allude to them, to interfere with the immune system. And what harms is that in, in infectious and inflammation processes go on, especially on the level of the microcirculation, which cause this organ uh, damage. And what is also not, is not known, although it was already in the report by the WHO in 2017, when the WHO sepsis resolution was adopted, that it's not only bacteria, it's any pathogen, including viruses, who may cause sepsis. And this means that most of the deaths from COVID-19 are deaths from sepsis, viral sepsis, due to multiple organ failure and septic shock. And just some recent data which have uh, fostered the FDA for an emergency use authorization, um, which is an antibody against an the innate immune system, and this in, could be demonstrated in 360 patients only in a worldwide study that the mortality could be reduced, 60-day mortality by 27%, and in the predefined population for European patients, which has to do, and this is our all ICU treated patients, uh, the reduction was even higher. So there is care, but this needs the understanding what the difference is between an infection and you need to know the signs, both physicians and also patients, because if you do it too early, you may harm. What Sir William Osler also said in 1889 is that humanity has three great enem uh, enemies, favor, war, and famine, and by far the most terrible is fever. And this was long ago, but if you need, look at the number. The actual numbers from sepsis, COVID-19, HIV, hunger, war, and cancer, and AMR, you understand that this message is still true today. And it's hard to understand. What, and and this, is, this is a number of costs which you can find on the website of the Department of Health from a recent publication from Tim Buckman, who sets out the numbers who, of people who develop sepsis in the US and, and the number of deaths, and that it's around 60 million billion US dollars 
is spent for healthcare costs. And yet, also most Americans are not aware uh, on, on sepsis. And also the fact that the WHO sepsis resolution, which urges member states to integrate prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of sepsis in the national health systems, both and address it both in the community and healthcare settings, uh, is poorly uh, followed. And the measures, the simple low-cost measures are infection prevention by vaccination, clean care, and uh, the second message is early recognition and treatment of sepsis like stroke, like heart attack. And, uh, of course, we need to take care that also there's an F access to the healthcare system and also in terms of the existence uh, of intensive care uh, facilities. The importance of the healthcare systems, of the quality of the healthcare system, can be depicted from this, from this publication from, uh, in the CHAMA, where you see that simply by introduction of measures we discussed about, mandatory measures for all hospitals, critical care incidents, uh, uh, CIRS, critical care, central critical incidents reporting, and the rapid response teams were mandate, made mandatory around these times, and simply without using the word sepsis, this resulted in this decrease of um, the hospital mortality in, in sepsis. And in many countries, and except for most um, Anglo-American uh, countries, still the alarm in the hospital goes at the time of cardiac arrest, whereas it has demonstrated again and again, the earlier you intervene and the earlier you send then a uh, uh, hospital-wide service to all disciplines if there is a patient who is deteriorating. So this can save, obviously, uh, numerous lives. And things like what is the case in, in UK, said every healthcare worker and physician, physician needs to be trained in simple things to recognize deteriorating patients. Otherwise, they, they may not uh, work, uh, especially. In, in these uh, settings, and, and this simple measure also would m save millions of lives. So Liam Donaldson, Liam Donaldson, who is present, pointed out on the occasion of the adopt -op, uh, adopt adoption uh, of the sepsis resolution of WHO that some very important clinical issues uh, affecting life and death uh, have been in the backwaters. And what he also said, the public and the political space is a space to be, to change things. And this is a key message uh, uh, of, of, of my talk. And that quality improvement efforts work has been demonstrated, for example, by the implementation of the so-called Rory Staunton regulation in, the, in New York State, where all 179 Hospitals in state New York were mandated to document to which degree they comply with the so-called sepsis bundles, which means uh, antimicrobials in the first hour, which means fluid therapy, uh, which means uh, also taking blood cultures, et cetera, et cetera. And this, over several years, resulted in a decrease of hospital mortality from 32% uh, to 22%, and there's an hourly decrease in the, in the delay in survival rate by, by any delay of, antimicro of antimicrobials. And also the great work that has been supported also by Jeremy Hunt after a dramatic and use not necessary deaths of a two-year-old girl, which was taken up in the media. He apologized publicly. He, and he understood and aired it that the time of sepsis has come. And jointly with the UK Sepsis Trust, they did 
this campaign to empower patients, to educate them, to ask the physicians what has been done, but which is often turned down, still, unfortunately, also in, uh, uh, in the US. And that every family who gets a child in UK gets a booklet in which there is a 22-7 phone number and also there's education on the early signs of sepsis in babies and elderly children. So this is the way to go. And also this resulted in UK that between 2016 and 2018, the number of patients who got their antimicrobial within the first hour increased from around 30% to, to 70, 80 and, and, and 90%, so due to an improved uh, screening rate. So this is the way uh, to go, and there's also data, and this is also published in the British medical journals, even in, uh, in the outpatient setting, that urinary tract infections, which are severe, are treated um, with antibiotics immediately, or whether they are treated uh, deferred, this results uh, in um, uh, an increase in mortality. So if we, we, we talk a lot of, about antimicrobial resistance, and we must not forget that to understand and to educate people that those who need them need to get them in the first hour. And I will say another thing also on the cost effectiveness of quality improvement. You have seen this data from Australia. Just there's public, is one publication who initiated a quality improvement uh, uh, campaign under the label of Thinking Sepsis, Acting Fast in 10 hospitals in Victoria. And they were able to reduce the mortality rate from 15 to 8.5 percent. And this went along with the savings of 11 million, 2 million Australian dollars, and the investment in this campaign was 1.8 million dollars. So this return of this investment was sixfold. So it was been rightly said this morning by Joe that quality improvement, providing harm in healthcare, saves money, millions, billions of money in every country. And this is an, another notion. I skipped this. Uh, we need also, and this is data from Sweden, who have a system which can tell you how long it took uh, when patients addressed for the first, first time a GP in the healthcare system and how long it took until these patients arrived in the hospital. And this clearly data show that in case that this was longer than 12 hours, the risk die, or the odds to die, was four times higher. So this means how important education also of the public uh, is on the early signs of sepsis. And also the former minister of prime minister, now former minister of health and now prime minister in Ireland, after the unnecessary death of a pregnant uh, woman, also initiated an, a national campaign which resulted also in a significant decrease of mortality. Uh, we are very glad that the former EU commissioner also took this up on the level of the European Union and encouraged to really roll out uh, this need to act in the member states uh, several years ago uh, when we founded the European Sepsis Alliance. I was very happy that our lobbying also and, and I, I liked uh, not only act, act, advocacy, but also activism uh, to convince uh, Karl Lauterbach, the current Minister of Health, and he brought, it, uh, brought the need uh, to educate and to speak about sepsis in the context also of AMR and uh, to look for the synergies and the also G7 uh, more dedicated to, to, to care and to support the uh, implementation of the WHO sepsis uh, resolution on a, 
on a global level. This is the way to go. Also, you can make a difference on the hospital level, and this depends on individuals. Uh, this is right, right, the CEO of Norfolk Health, uh, where we founded in 2010 the Global Sepsis uh, Alliance, and they decreased their hospital mortality from around 40% of 5% uh, below 20%, and this is an example from a German uh, hospital. And again, things happened only after patients and, uh, and family members stood up, this lady handed over a puppet to Jeremy Hunt, and in this puppet she was the ashes of her child. So, and Jeremy Hunt declared this publicly, and I think this is so strong where you see how, and so important that also high-ranked policymakers speak about, uh, speak about uh, sepsis. So this is basically what I wanted to let you know and to encourage you uh, to join this vision because from my perspective, given the high numbers of sepsis that we have worldwide, which are higher than from cancer, the potential to reduce harm is enormous. Thank you very much for your attention.